Hello, gorgeous Gemini, and welcome to May 2020, the beginning of Gemini season, and also the beginning to a lot of important energy moving through your sign. We are doing work in your sign that is affecting the whole collective. Uh, and this month is really highlighting where that those important soulful transits are going to be hitting all of us and you specifically. Uh, those two big shifts are one, that the North Node of the Moon is going into your sign. Now, whenever the North Node shifts into your sign, it's going to be a year and a half of stepping up and into your power, which means that anything that you're doing to disservice yourself, to uh, belittle yourself, to hold yourself back, to stay in old patterning is going to get challenged and fall away. Um, the North Node is in your sign, the South Node of the Moon is in your opposite sign of Sagittarius, and this is also going to be something that has to do with releasing old patterning when it comes to relationship and what you rely on as far as that. Each of you is going to experience that differently. North Node is extremely empowering in your sign, however it is going to challenge where you're holding on to the old, because the North Node wants to pull us forward. And collectively, we're all going to be looking to Gemini energy, to storytelling energy, to analytical energy, and how we use that either to our benefit or our detriment. So this is a really powerful shift that starts on May 5th, and we will have that for a year and a half. Beautiful transit. The other big thing, the second big thing that's working with Gemini this month is that Venus is starting her retrograde uh, on the 13th, and that will She's going to do all her work in Mercury in Gemini all the way through the next few months. She's already been in Gemini for a little bit. She's doing her full retrograde for six weeks, the six week retrograde that ends on June 24th, 25th. And then she has to do all her post shadow work for about a month after that. So we're going to be doing Venus work with Gemini as well. So North Node of the Moon in, Cancer, in Gemini <laughs> and Venus in Gemini and doing all that work. Plus, plus, we are starting to have all of our outer planet retrogrades kick in over the next several months. We start May already having Jupiter or Pluto retrograde, excuse me. And then this month we see Jupiter go retrograde on the 14th in your eighth house. Uh, <laughs> big spiritual evolution going on there. We have Saturn going retrograde on the 11th in your ninth house of how you view your life, your life philosophy. So there's a lot of self-reflection going on here for you, Geminis. And the message that came through for me as I thought through the ener these big energetic pulls, right? So much that has to do with being internal. So much that has to do with hearing your internal monologue and and going from doing the work from within to out. This month is all about doing the work inside before we take it outside. Pretty much every transit at this time, even Mars is gonna be in Pisces, the sign of the hidden, the esoteric, the spiritual, the ascended, right? Action in Mars has to come from, with Mars and Pisces has to come from the spiritual before it becomes the physical. Um, all these outer planets are going to be in retrograde. Venus is going to be in retrograde. The North Node of the Moon is highlighting how we communicate. So this is going to be a time when you are being asked to embody your these deeper uh, perspective shifts on who you are in the world in the little rituals you do and the way you show up to the small details of life first card finally came out nine of cups and there being a really focused intent there on getting you back to the basics getting you back to yourself um, Venus retrograde in your sign is you you know we're gonna talk about that on my patreon we're gonna be doing a full six weeks of ritual and check on on Patreon during the Venus retrograde. So every single week I'm going to be coming on doing 
a discussion about where what the work is what i'm seeing showing up all the different themes and layers if you're interested in that you can find the patreon link below um, we're going to be doing all that work but venus retrograde has the reputation of bringing back exes bringing in challenging relationships and clearing so-called karma when it comes to relationships right uh, Knight of Pentacles, but when it's in your sign, it's going to be a lot more about your evolution within yourself. It's going to have a lot more to do with how you are evolving within yourself. The Tower and the Hierophant wanted to come out. <laughs> Those are very popular energies right now. It's very um, Uranus and Taurus energy. And so much of the work that you're doing, Gems, is from the inside out, from the hidden, the esoteric, out into the physical. Uh, Uranus, especially if you're Gemini rising right now, Uranus is in your 12th house. The spiritual, the esoteric, the hidden. The revolution comes from there first. So this month, you're going to be noticing you're getting asked time and again to really show up to the details. Venus retrograde wants us to remember knight of swords love it what we really love and value she wants to bring us back home to the enjoyment of things from a really deep level right this is an extremely healing transit that will bring you back to a home truth to a home frequency and she will strip away things that are not serving and she will also sh give us mirrors to show us things that maybe we have graduated from we've released right so this is going to be very internal plus we have all that all those outer planets retrograding so this is this is a revolutionary month but from the hidden and the unseen side not from the physical uh, and for you all because you have these big energies moving through parts of your experience that have to do with how you envision yourself six of wands love it and how you the paradigm you use to move through the world four of wands woo this this reading is going all over the place if you haven't noticed we start with a lot of calm soothing energy we have a storm in the middle and then we have a lot of triumph at the end and i think that is such an appropriate <laughs> energy discussion for an eight of pentacles perfect for this month because one of the pieces of wisdom that venus retrograde is going to show us and also north node in cancer is this idea of short form waves right the kind of waves where you ride a storm you let an, an emotion pour through your body and then you move forward and you have a different emotion then that is excitement or triumph or hope um, and then you have another moment of the storm there will be a lot of lilting of that tone and that frequency throughout may that you'll be working with and because you are getting a huge download recalibration initiation energy at this time because you have venus and the north node both saying all right we are going to affirm the things that are working for you we are going to affirm where we are directing that north star we are going to affirm those things you know one thing i will say about the way that the transits are working yes there's retrogrades happening which means we're doing the internal magical work first so important right that's really where the magic happens but it's also saying this isn't about shadow work necessarily. This isn't about digging through the midnight garden, as I call it, where you really push through some really tough stuff, right? It's the most of the focus is going to be on what you want to build next, what, what works for you, what affirms for you. And that's going to start with the little details, the little rituals. And actually that's what um, Nine of Cups and Knight of Pentacles speak to. These cards are very much about what i think we sometimes think of as mundane right mundane happiness the softness the slowness the sweetness of something you know it's the little details really savoring pouring that tea uh, into a cup you know that you love uh, seeing the sun hit a window feeling the touch of somebody's arm hand on your arm you know these little detailed things I remember when, you know, I was 19 or 20 thinking how <laughs>
boring life must be once you stop going out and doing wild things and having fun and playing all the time. Like what do, what do adults do, right? This was me at 19. I'm, I don't know if this is everybody, but, um, and wondering, you know, how do you entertain yourself? How could that be so interesting? Just sitting there, you know, savoring a book and being really quiet. And of course, you know, now, many, many, many years later, I realize how beautiful it is to be in what is often considered mundane or boring, you know, to not be always in consuming mode, to be in watchful mode, to be in integrative mode, to be in self-nurturing mode. I think Knight of Pentacles also gets a bad rap, right, for being a little too overly cautious. But I think Knight of Pentacles is very much a modality that the world is working with, along with the tower. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a weird combo, right? Knight of Pentacles and the tower, it's like, all the change in the world, but also don't move a muscle and just sit quietly and watch and perceive. Now that once again is reflecting back to this idea of we do the energy work first before we see the external results. Also Knight of Pentacles watches carefully. You know, he's kind of the guy who watches the room. Everybody else is talking, showing their cards, <laughs> making moves without planning ahead. He's watching all of that, right? When he makes a move then, it's very well informed based on everybody else, based on how he's feeling within that, right? And there is something really valuable about the Knight of Pentacles way of moving through the world. Now, Nine of Cups is also about being held, being seen, falling back into that held space, not pushing, not resisting. These cards do not do well with resistance. Anytime you resist, it's gonna be like hitting into a jello wall that <laughs> has you relaxing again. Now, there is this important calibrator of the tower, right? And this card has been just nonstop in all of my work. It's really enjoying its moment in the sun. Uranus and Taurus kind of energy is very strong here. And <laughs> so funny just to see this all together. Um, and the thing with that is, right, our revolution with how we bring in information, how we apply that information, how we move through the world. The tower does de dismantle what's no longer serving us. And once again, you know, north node of the moon in your sign, you're going to get used to that transit, which has everything to do with pulling you forward into to greater destiny. Venus retrograde in your sign going to be helping you shed anything that's no longer serving. Um, and even something like Jupiter retrograde right now, you know, Jupiter's going retrograde this month and Jupiter's working in Capricorn in your eighth house of death and transformation, which means there is a skin shedding going on. However, this is really important. Tower is a card that is very contextual. So this card is about what nourishes you. What truly nourishes you? What thoughts, what habits, what institutions, what commitments nourish you and what imprisons you? And that question is going to come up time and again. Now, like I said, this month isn't necessarily about deconstruction, shadow work, digging through. There may be some themes of that, but the ultimate goal here is to get you back to focusing on what it is you do want to build. And that's where these top four cards are amazing. Knight of Swords, Six of Wands, Four of Wands, Eight of Pentacles. These are all future focused, staying present. That sounds like two different things, <laughs> but I think here's the thing with that, right? Um, all four of these cards do want forward motion and do bring in forward motion. Do bring an opportunity, do bring in open doors, do bring in a sense of opportunity, forward motion building, making plans, all those things that a lot of us are craving right now to be able to do, right? Like um, new ideas coming in, new opportunities coming in, a sense of triumph, accomplishment, finishing, graduation, celebrations to plan and culminate, and work to do, right? These are all very action-based cards, but here's the thing. You are going to be able to tap into your vision for your future by staying here in the rituals of what you are doing today. And that's really what Eight of Pentacles speaks to, right? The apprentice becomes the master, but how does the apprentice become the master? by showing up to that detailed work every single day, 
right? So using part of the workshopping that's going on with these trends is using your quick analytical minds, your storytelling minds, your ability to come up with things and weave story and pull disparate elements together has to be used in service to you has to be used in service to your becoming, in service to your forward vision, in service to what you love, value, and truly want. And part of that is going to be not cutting yourself off at the knee when you have a vision or a dream, when you realize something's not working for you and saying, well, with everything the way that it is, I'm not allowed to advocate for myself. I'm not allowed to actually wish for that. So I'm just gonna cut my wish off here at like 75% and demote myself, right? The, the transits at this time are going to say, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Hey, uh, did, you, did you cut your, your request off at the knees again for no good reason? You know, and it's not about like harping on the universe saying, I want this, I want this. It's more just when you're in that soft, playful dreaming space, when you're in that workshopping, thinking about what you wanna build next space, what is it that comes up and do you try and edit out certain aspects of it because you feel like it's gratuitous or it's too much or you're not allowed to ask for it, especially at this time? The Six of Wands and the Four of Wands especially speak to there being a lot of warmth around the things you're asking for. You know, the things you truly want are often not these empty, extravagant things. They are things like deep connection, warmth, uh, creative vision, juicy creative play, uh, all sorts of things like that. And, and these cards are very supportive of you doing that. But once again, inside out is going to be the key over and over and over again. If there is one lesson that's coming up between Uranus being in Taurus doing that work and <laughs> Venus and Gemini doing her retrograde work, it's the inside out, the inside storytelling manifested outward in how we connect to the world. All right, I'm going to, I wrote up a series of words uh, on some paper for this month to inspire what overarching message is coming through for me. So let's see what word you guys get. Dreams. Love that dreams. So dreaming is really important at this time. We are at the beginning of Gemini season in May. I have a lot of May Geminis in my life. So many May Geminis in my life. It's kind of wild. Uh, they've been very good friends to me. And dreams. Dreams are important at this time. And, and yes, the sleep kind of dreams and also the dreams you, you take in and create in those creative spaces, right? And dreaming is a form of planning. And that is something that is easy to demote in life and say, ah, uh, yeah, people say that, but your inner critic can be like, yeah, but does that really, you know, does that really matter if you're not backing it up with action, right? Sure. But if you don't have the dream first, how are you gonna take actions that align with it? It's not gonna happen. So dreams, dreams are your beacon at this time. Dreams are how you are going to find that connectiveness. So you have to believe first, you have to connect in first, and then watch yourself take each step. Dream and ritual are really important for you all this month. There's a lot of support here. But the only way you're going to find yourself moving forward and connecting with this energy is if you're not holding too tight to an old foundation, an old container where you feel like that's who you were supposed to be. So keep that in mind as you traverse through these very powerful waters. There's a lot of healing going on at this time. Um, it's not all about dismantling everything. The dismantling and the revolution are coming from a soul level for many of us. and. That is really the logic we are working with at this time. I'm loving this Gemini energy though. I'm really excited for North Node energy moving through Gemini. I think, like I said, the way we use our words, the way we use our, our analytical minds, the way we communicate, the way we connect, all of these things are getting lit up with North Node. And for a long time, I think we've seen where those words and those stories and those actions and those quick moving energies can 
to be scary and be a prison and be limiting and be and divide us right and make us feel as though there's an us and a them in the world and this north node moving through your sign is going to help us heal that help us connect with our storytelling in a very different modality i'm really excited to see that happen and also this venus energy like i said we're going to be going through that thoroughly over on my patreon and of course we also do the full moon activations the weekly astrology discussion so if you're looking for more resources during this really intense time and somewhere to kind of land and relax i would love to see you over on my patreon i'll leave the link below i will also be opening up more sessions for june just waiting to get some logistics figured out uh, so if you're looking to work one-on-one -on -one with me uh, i will leave my link below so you can check out what i have going on there and uh, you can find me on Instagram at Sarah Verba. Of course, as always, check out Pink Loon. I'm always wearing her jewelry. It keeps me grounded, calm, focused, and full of love. I am sending you all so much love. I can't wait to see what this month brings us all. I'm excited for Gemini season. And thank you for being here with me. I hope you subscribe and like this video and stick around for more fun and adventures. Sending you all my love.